refreshing. A cup of cold water. And I know it would be even more refreshing if I had been out for a run or working in my garden on a hot summer day. And it makes me think we really don't know how good we have it. That we can just turn on our faucets and get a cup of cold water. You see, a cup of cold water would have been much more difficult to come by in Jesus' time. The women, every day, would go to the village well to draw water for that day. And now, down deep in that well, it would be clear and cool. But after just a few minutes in the hot Palestinian sun and that cool water would be warm. So you might offer your dinner guest a cup of water but not cold water. Unless someone in the house were to go back to the well and draw fresh water and quickly return to the house. You see, offering a cup of cold water was a sign of great hospitality. This week, in the 10th chapter of Matthew, we hear Jesus say that whoever offers even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones will have their reward. And now for Jesus to say little ones doesn't just mean children, it means all who are in need, the lost and the hurting, the unappreciated and the impoverished, those whose society pushes aside. Jesus says, offer a thirst quenching cup of cold water to these, go out of your way to offer hospitality. So this week, we ask, in what ways are we practicing this kind of divine hospitality in our lives? And how can we do better? And remember, a cup of cold water could mean any myriad of things, food, shelter, clothing, water, or friendship, and care, true compassion. So I invite you to come and taste again for yourself that thirst-quenching, life-giving cup of cold water that Jesus offers you through his own hospitality and sacrifice. And hear again that call to love as Christ first loved us. I look forward to seeing you in worship. <laughs>